Hi there, everyone. <coughs> this is Adam from Community Pharmacy Scotland. I uh, started the latest Facebook Live uh, event. I really had hoped to be doing this about our NHS Pharmacy First service, but current situation demands that uh, we open up more lines of communication and get some more information out there about uh, COVID-19. So I think before we start this evening, we've, we've got uh, a couple of things to cover. Um, before we even go over any of the technical aspects, uh, I'm just going to say that we absolutely need to extend our thanks uh, to community pharmacy teams across the whole country. What, what you're doing is nothing short of heroic um, in the face of extreme pressures, which we're hearing about every day, every minute, every hour. So we will keep this. We know that you're, you've been hard up against it. Many of you are still at work right now. We will keep this event as short and as useful as we can to protect your time. What I'll say is we are running live on Facebook. We're also streaming on Twitter as well, so you'll see me pointing to two different cameras running here. Um, <coughs> excuse me. That's the first cough of the day, don't worry. So I'll be referencing both Twitter. This is just a feed. If you want to submit questions, please access Facebook Live. Uh, I'm joined in the room today. You can't see folk, but um, I'm joined today by Hannah McQuillan. I've got Matthew Barclay. I've got Amanda Ray and Michael Oswald, uh, all from the team in here this evening uh, on the backup with all the, all the latest information and to capture the uh, information we go, as we go forward. This is absolutely going to be different from our previous events that we've done on Facebook Live. Whereas those have been very much ask me anything events, uh, relatively light-hearted, a bit of a wrong discussion, um, we're going to use this time just now to both answer what we can of the questions that you've got, uh, but also to work with you to build a picture of the emerging issues, because the information we've been getting in from you and your teams over the last, the course of the last week have been absolutely crucial um, in helping us to decide what's the priority who do we need to speak to, who do we need to influence um, uh, and just to make our plans going forward. So again, just for better information, we've been releasing a, a video of Harry McQuillan every day, every weekday so far, um, as we learn more and as things change. Uh, this will continue for the foreseeable. Might not always be Harry, but um, we'll get that out to you as we learn more. We have just five minutes ago finished uh, recording today's video, which will be with you this evening. Uh, we would absolutely encourage you to keep an eye out for these and, and use them as information sources um, with the caveat that they may go out of date the very next day, but we, we will let you know. So watch the most recent video. We've also got a dedicated COVID-19 area on our website. Um, we're striving to keep that updated with the latest operational information and links to clinical advice. So bearing in mind that we are not the experts with the clinical advice or the um, any of the isolation advice, but we do link to all of it. And what we do is we link to the one source of truth, whether it's Health Protection Scotland or NHS Inform, that we know are, are kept up to date. Uh, there's also a specific inquiries form in this area um, for COVID questions that we've had loads of information coming through, so thank you for that. It's a really useful tool. Um, as we answer them, our team are, are working to identify themes and publish our responses, so that's our support team, Robbie and Graeme. Um, they are actually uh, working from home at the moment <laughs> to self isolate and keep themselves safe. Which is why I will say, as we go through this evening, um, we've got five of the blind leading the blind with the te <laughs> with the technology. Get some laughs there. Um, so please bear with us. There are going to be gaps in time between you answering, asking questions, and us answering them. We may lose track of, of questions. Um, what we will do is we will endeavour to answer as much as we can um, while we're going along. And anything that we don't catch specifically, please don't worry. Um, Graham and Robbie will come back through the text tomorrow and we'll pick out anything if it requires an individual response back to you. Or if we haven't answered a, a, your question, we'll get back to you. And again, we'll get it up in the FAQs um, once they're published. But we, we're very much moving at pace here, so please do bear with us. Uh, and also, if you are watching this back after the 18th of March, which is today, please be aware that information on this may already be out of date, so please do refer to that area on the website I was talking about for the latest. So, all that said, let's get started. Now, this is already, uh, unlike our previous uh, sessions where I have to fill in with a couple of questions that have been sent in by email at the start, but I see we've already got a question there from Andy. Um, thanks for joining, Andy. I see also Natalie and Kate, you're, you're with us as well. 
and he's asking us, uh, for those of you on, on Twitter, is there any idea when HPS Scotland will be publishing the updated advice? So we have been working on this the last two days. Um, it, it is unacceptable that that has been taken down whilst it's being updated. Uh, we have taken that and escalated it to the highest level of Scottish Government. I'm going to check my colleagues in now because it's escaped me exactly what the timeline on that is. Tonight after 7pm. Tonight tomorrow, after 7pm. Or tomorrow. Right, okay. So no sooner than 7pm tonight. Um, and if it is not there tonight, it will be there tomorrow morning. Is, is, the current, uh, is the current guidance on that. What we do have is we currently have in the office the version 9 before it was taken down. Uh, if that's of any use, if you need it now, then please do get in touch and we will, we will get that out to you. Uh, Farzana, hello uh, this evening as well. You're, you're asking the same question. You, you're absolutely right and you're, you guys are not the first to be asking for this. We are pressing as hard as we can for it to be updated um, as we understand it. Even in between, say, uh, version 9 being taken down, it's skipped ahead to 11 or 12 now, so they are working on it. Um, it's a matter of getting it up, yeah. Uh, hello, Arthur, it's uh, Glasgow, nice to see you tonight as well. Okay, so we've got no further questions coming in right at this moment, so um, we've, we've had a couple throughout the day, so I'm, I'm probably just going to update you on them as we go. Some of this content will, will be new, um, you can watch this video back, but actually um, Harry's video should be up later on this evening or again first thing tomorrow um, to talk you through things in a much more sort of measured and ordered manner. Um, probably the biggest announcement that's come out of today is the schools, uh, the announcement that schools are closed. Um, today the First Minister uh, did announce that they would all close after Friday um, and they may not reopen even until after the summer holidays. There will be a statement tomorrow to confirm the details of that. What, would I, what I would say is that in the mainstream uh, media what has probably been missed or what, what wasn't clear, if I'm going to be fair, what wasn't clear at the outset of that announcement is that um, there will be arrangements made for the children of key workers, doctors, nurses, other critical uh, staff um, and that's all being worked out just now we don't have the timelines on it but we will absolutely seek to ensure that pharmacy teams are included in this um, I had, had a meeting with the, the cabinet secretary for health and sport Jean Freeman today um, to make her aware of all the issues we have in, in community pharmacy and what, what might crop up coming forward as well uh, and absolutely representation was made at, at the highest level um, and she is more than aware that community pharmacy is the front line in this fight there won't be a one-size-fits-all approach for schools across Scotland, so we'll await further details. Okay, so the next question that we've got as well uh, coming through is a question, uh, and I apologise, I've been slid pieces of paper here, which is very helpful. Yeah. Um, so I might not catch who's asked which question, but hopefully we, we, can, we can follow us up. So uh, there's been a question saying, when will PPE be issued? So again, um, from just hot off the press from this meeting today, uh, PPE will now be, uh, the intention is that that will now be provided um, to community pharmacy teams for the purposes of deep cleaning. So the instruction to get that started to be distributed um, is to be made to national procurement by our colleagues in NHS and Scottish Government. We don't yet have time skills for it. But we're following this up, and as soon as we know, we will share that information and we'll have it out to you as soon as it's humanly possible. So thanks for that question. Hopefully that gives you a wee bit of an idea. Okay, so the next question coming through. Uh, on testing, yeah, so we've had a whole load of questions about testing. Totally understand this. Um, what's happening at the moment, again, off, uh, off the back of this meeting today, the government are seeking a list of critical roles for an extend, expanded testing programme to be produced. So just now, this is all lab-based testing that, that's trusted at the moment. And the capacity for that is, is largely taken up by testing in acute settings, which understandably is, is required. Um, so with the capacity that's left, the government's looking to draw up this list of critical roles. CPS are feeding into it, and um, we're absolutely advocating on your behalf that um, that pharmacy, pharmacists and, and pharmacy team members involved in, in the dispensing process are, are absolutely included in that. Now, we're aware it's a significant issue. We're pushing for it. What we'll say is the testing is likely, and this is, the, this is true across all health professions, the testing will be for those who are symptomatic. That is the current policy decision. We pressed hard 
on your behalf because we understand that actually the impact of the household isolation policies just now is what's the real killer. Um, but the policy stands just now that it's symptomatic tests for symptomatic individuals only at this point as we go forward. Further questions? Next question. Okay, so Rona. Thank you very much. So Rona, you have said, are there any plans to relax uh, the RP legislation to allow out of hours uh, dispensing by dispensary teams? So at the moment we are working with the GPHC, we've got weekly calls with them and actually picking up in between times as well as things develop quickly. Um, and we will update the information on that on, on the COVID CPS site as that becomes available. We're aware of that being a conversation um, that, that's happening now at the moment. It would absolutely make sense and I would refer everyone back. I, I really must say if you if you haven't read it already, the GPH statement, GPHC statement on flexible regulation is a must read at this moment in time. That should help you with um, feeling empowered to safely do what you need to do, depart where necessary from established procedures and, and SOPs to take care of your patients how you see fit. Okay, so that's great. So that's a bonus question. Okay. This is not good for the tree population. Right. Mark Feeney. Uh, hello, Mark. Good to see you on this evening. Um, Mark is saying, don't forget wholesale workers for schools, of course. Um, the supply chain is absolutely critical to you guys, and we've heard a few things today about supply chain that we're following up and keeping an eye on. Um, so we have got an answer to that. So um, the Cabinet Secretary Jane Freeman will highlight this point about wholesale workers to Fiona Hislop, who's in charge of this process and drawing up uh, this list for schools to keep the supply chain going, because um, there's no use having pharmacies uh, with people in them and uh, the supply chain completely falls over. So that is absolutely being looked at. Thank you very much, Mark, for that, for that question. This is the kind of information and points that we need from you guys. Uh, this helps us to direct questioning, um, to pick up on points that nobody else would think of other than you that, that are out there in the front line. I'm going to take the next question now from Nish, or Nish, apologies if I, I pronounce it incorrectly, uh, who's asking, is there going to be a national restriction of trading hours similar to Fourth Valley? Um, again today, um, Amanda Michael and I were on a call with the National Primary Care Community Pharmacy Group leads. Um, we are the details have yet to be finalised, but we came to a consensus view in that group. It may require ratifying by by uh, boards, but we're looking at a national consensus view consensus view that for flexibility, um, what that will look like broadly speaking um, will be. If needed to rest, recuperate, uh, decide your priorities, deep clean or clean if necessary, it may look like being able to close if necessary for one hour either end of your established working day and an hour for a lunch break in the middle of the day to enable pharmacy business to carry on to, to give you guys that bit of time um, to just clear heads to decide on priorities <clears throat> excuse me I must say that along with that though so, so if you do that up, up to that level of closure so again I'll reiterate that's one hour um, it was on Twitter one hour either end of your ordinary working hours plus an hour for lunch you can close without having to go down the normal uh, established board route to let them know that you have you have closed for part of the day however if you have to close for longer then please, please, you must follow the established procedures for letting the health board know. That helps direct um, inquiries, it helps direct care of patients. So if you search our website, and we did this work a couple of months ago, thank goodness, um, if you search the word closure in the search box at the top right of our screen on the website, you will be taken to an area that has the details for all the health boards that shows you the process that you need to take to, to highlight to boards. That will also then feed into them and let them know um, where hotspots are for uh, pharmaceutical care services, they, they're the ones that need to make sure there's, there's a, a service available in, in, the, in the local area. So thank you very much Nisha, for that. I've got a, a train of questions coming up here, so I'll, I'll rattle through them as I can. Uh, I've got Alana coming in, uh, she's asking for guidance on deep clean, so that will come in with the HPS, the Health Protection Scotland website, um, by tomorrow at the latest. Our COVID-19 website area points directly to the HPS site. Um, 
uh, there was a supplementary question from Alana on uh, will community pharmacies be reimbursed for purchases of test kits? I'm assuming for, for COVID-19. The answer to that is that I know um, that's not a recommendation at this moment in time. Uh, and as I was saying earlier on about the, the testing of pharmacy teams who are symptomatic, uh, that will be done along the established routes and the recognised tests. There is a, a parallel piece of work that's going on alongside deciding who needs to be tested and constantly reviewing that procedure um, where expert scientists are actually looking at what are the tests that can be trusted reliably to give results. Um, once that piece of work is complete, which we will keep close to, then that might change the situation. Um, and, and we'll let you know as soon as it's possible. So thank you, Alana, for that. Thanks, Annie. Okay, Christine. Christine, hello. Welcome this evening. Um, so you have asked us about pregnant pharmacy staff. Any black and white guidance? Grey area at the moment. You're right, it is a grey area at the moment. So what we can say on this, for employees in higher risk groups, which includes um, staff who are, who are pregnant, the, the advice is that they have to pay very close attention to social distancing measures. Those, the details of those measures are available on both the NHS Inform and the Health Protection Scotland website. Again, our website links straight through to them. What that says at the moment is, uh, part of the social distancing measures is, if you're part of that group, you must really, really, really work from home wherever necessary. As a pregnant person working in community pharmacy, it's incredibly difficult to take any of that work home or work from home. We understand that. So in lieu of a black and white decision there, there will have to be a risk assessment undertaken, a person-centred risk assessment. You'll have to take into account what is the environment, what does the person look like, what does the pregnancy look like with that person in their current condition as well, and what does their role like, what does the work that they undertake look like, what is their risk exposure as well, um, and you'll have to undertake this risk assessment in partnership with that person and come to the right decision for them. And that, that, that's where we would take it with that advice just now, again we're not the experts, but that is what the current guidance says, um, so hopefully that makes it a little clearer for you, and I appreciate that there is no standardised risk assessment form for you to use. Uh, to undertake that, um, but you'll just have to use your knowledge of your business, your environment, the person's role, the person and their pregnancy, as I, as I said earlier. Hopefully that's of some, of some help to you. Um, and if necessary, clearly that might involve removing them from, from frontline duties. So thank you, Christine, for, for that question. You're, you're not the first on that one. Okay. Okay, Mark Finney again, uh, another key question. Can you sort it that 100 pack paracetamol is available en masse? We are on this, so a PGD is currently being worked on to, to allow for this, um, to, to allow the pollen pack. We, we can't uh, scrap the, the current legislation or just tell people to frequently ignore it, but that is being worked on as a, by Scottish Government as a, a piece of uh, urgency to make sure that that's available, because clearly there's probably a dual part here. This supply chain had a bit of a wobble last week, so um, how do you get around that? But then there's also the secondary part that says, well, if people are self-isolating, it's absolutely no use to send them 32 or even necessarily 64 um, tablets, so you, you probably want to be able to treat them or give them treatment to cover a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. So that is absolutely being looked at, Mark, and again, we will update on that uh, and we will be chasing that uh, as much as we possibly can. Okay, so I've got another question here around PPE. When will it be issued? So yeah, that is, we covered that probably at the very, very start of the session, but for those of you that have, that have just joined us or are watching back, um, the decision has been made, PPE for the purposes of deep cleaning. Well, the intention is now to issue that to community pharmacies. The process of events that needs to happen is that Scottish Government decision needs to be relayed through to our colleagues at NHS National Procurement, fit into their work plan, and then the distribution needs to start, so there will be a lag. We're not involved in national procurement distribution operations, we don't know what that looks like, but we are keeping close and will be chasing a timeline um, with all of our resources that are available to us. So um, to make that clear though, the policy decision is now that the intention is it goes out to you for the purposes of deep cleaning. So thank you for that, and I think it's worth it, although we've already said it, it's absolutely worth going over that one again. So Andy, uh, again, Andy, thank you very much. You were our first question and coming in with another one here. So Andy is asking, 
when Pharmacy First is, is launched in full, um, will we be able to do telephone triage similar to GPs? So there's probably going to step back from that question uh, a little bit to, to answer a wider question and then narrow down into that. So Pharmacy First in its launch is under constant review uh, as to what happens with it. And so we're waiting on a policy decision on, on that. Um, just uh, Harry, from your video, the detail from that, we're happy to. Uh, yeah. yeah. So um, the network is going to be looked to as we go forward, and as it is right now, to uh, be one of the main sources of dealing with self-limiting common clinical conditions. It's, it's a huge part of what you, you guys are doing, and as um, clearly the demand for supply now is incredibly high, as people start to have the medication, their medication and enough to do them at least for a while, um, that demand, it may not feel like it just now, um, it may not, but that demand will, will ebb, um, and perhaps the balance of your focus might shift slightly. Um, that will, what we're doing uh, and what has been decided at the Scottish Government is that the current maths in the near future is likely to be open to everybody. And I would like uh, everybody here at CPS would like everyone to see that as a tool for assessment supply so that you're able to just treat everybody the same that, that comes in um, and make sure that they're, they're dealt with the same way. And that probably ties into, uh, again, there's probably a wider thing here. I'm totally ruining Harry's thunder here, <laughs> or stealing his thunder even, but maybe not everyone's watching this video. Again, there's a, there's another piece of information that comes in from the side on this. Um, we're, we're made aware today that the redeployment of a pharmacy resource from other areas of, or other sectors, if we wish, I hate talking about sectors, but um, it's is, is going to happen, uh, as are the redeployment of perhaps even social care staff um, who, whose duties are no longer absolutely urgent and critical. And community pharmacy is going to be one of the beneficiaries of, of that. Um, the intent behind releasing that, apart from the fact that we clearly know you guys are under extreme pressure, is to support the maintenance of our current availability opening times. So really trying to protect that um, open most days and where the pharmacy is open uh, longer at weekends and also sort of trying to protect that as far as possible even in the face of um, our own current resource uh, challenges and all the school closures and things that are happening just now um, and this links into the point that I made earlier and that it clearly isn't possible straight away so in the meantime while we wait for this cavalry to arrive from other areas of the health service I'll reiterate from earlier on, and I think it's worth repeating, um, all health boards, we've got a consensus view, and you'll get communication shortly that actually you will be able to, if needed, reduce your opening hours from uh, to not open the first and last hour of your established working day, and for an hour for lunch during the day as well, to allow you to rest, recuperate, prioritise. Um, you can absolutely do that, um, and that will be the interim situation, the interim uh, opening our guidance until such times as, as I say, the cavalry arrives from elsewhere, because that's clearly a massive undertaking to redeploy people um, out, out, out into community. That takes me a million miles away from what you actually asked, Andy, so let's get back to that. Um, you should absolutely deliver their service in the way that you feel is professionally possible or appropriate, and that is taken into account both the situation the patient finds themselves in and the situation and level of risk that your team find themselves in as well. Um, if that means telephone triage, then it means telephone triage. And again, you guys are trusted to run with that service um, and deliver it the way that is the safest, the way that you, you guys know what you're doing with your professional um, professional judgment. <clears throat> Excuse me, oh, second cough the night. Uh, So, yeah, I think I'll use an analogy that we used at the, the Pharmacy First Roadshows in that if you have somebody who's saying, I have a fever, I may need, or sorry, I have a fever and no other symptoms, then you might want to consider assessing and treating them. If somebody's phoning saying, my child is floppy and has a rash, then probably not. So, Andy, thank you for your question. Set us off on a bit of a tangent, um, but, but worth doing. So, pass that on. Now, ah, okay, right. So Arthur, Arthur, you have asked us, will community pharmacy be closed at some point? So the answer to that is ideally, 
we want to keep pharmacies in the network trading. And we've talked a wee bit there about the potential of reduction errors, and that is the current interim guidance we have said um, from the outset of all these pieces of work and communication we're trying to get out to you. We'll communicate with you daily about what the situation is. It will change from day to day. Um, we're going to get potential support from the rest of the um, pharmacy profession, uh, and again, as I said earlier, even, even um, areas of, of health and social care partnerships to help with, with duties that aren't necessarily professional or don't need trained staff. Um, a last resort may be closure or consolidation where required, so we did a bit of work and we, we actually need to speak to um, the network as far as possible, so again, feeding in would be really helpful. Um, we need to start planning ahead and thinking about what does the network feel or what would be, um, and I'm sure there are 10, 10 million issues with this, but how do your businesses and how do your teams feel about in the event of getting to closures, working across businesses and sharing staff, sharing resource, and it'll be a matter of a great big mess to make things work that when the dust settles will be sorted out, but we need to start hearing not the fine detail of what you think the issues might be, um, we need to hear about how you feel about that broadly um, and any major, major considerations that you've got. Um, so after hopefully that answers your question, the, the Scottish Government, I think Harry probably fair to, do, to say from today's meeting, Jean Freeman knows that community pharmacy is the front line and is doing everything in her power to protect. Yeah. 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 Okay. So thank you, Arthur, for that. Now, I have got hot off the GPHC press. This is probably an interruption rather than a question from, from the audience. So um, I'm going to read this out to you. So it's a joint statement from the GPHC and PSNI, which is the Northern Irish Regulator, on the regulatory approach in challenging circumstances. So this is worth finding the text for um, once you stop watching this. But I am going to read this out to you verbatim just so that it makes sense. It's the first time seeing it as well. So they're saying, hello. As the regulators of pharmacy professionals in the UK, we recognise that our registrants may have understandable concerns about decisions they might need to take in order to provide the best care in challenging circumstances. Together, we've prepared a joint statement on how we will carry out our roles during this time. The first concern of registered pharmacy professionals is the care of their patients and people who use health and social care services. It's important that they use their professional judgment to assess any risk to the delivery of safe care, informed by any relevant guidance and the values and principles set out in our professional standards. We recognise that in highly challenging circumstances, professionals may need to depart from established procedures in order to care for patients and their families. Our regulatory standards are designed to be flexible and to provide a framework for decision making in a wide range of situations. They support professionals by highlighting the key principles which should be followed, including the need to work cooperatively with colleagues to keep, a sa to keep people safe, to practice in line with the best available evidence, to recognise and work within the limits of their competence, and to have appropriate indemnity arrangements relevant to their practice. Even during highly challenging circumstances, professionals quite rightly want to meet the legal requirements that apply. This includes the duty on the responsible pharmacist to secure the safe and effective running of the pharmacy in relation to the retail sale and supply of all medicines. We recognise there may be situations where the responsible pharmacist unavoidably has to leave the pharmacy at short notice partway through the day. For example, if they are unwell and need to self-isolate. Where no locum cover can be secured at the pharmacy and recognising the potential effects of the current pandemic, it would be in the patient's best interests for medicines already dispensed to be supplied from the pharmacy rather than, oh sorry, for medicines already dispensed to be supplied from the pharmacy rather than not supplied at all, even though this may not be in strict accordance with the law as normally understood. The pharmacy regulators will support pharmacy professionals in the front line making this judgment in patients' best interests. In such a circumstances, we would expect there to be access to a pharmacist by phone or video link to provide direction for the remaining staff in the pharmacy. Such an approach should only be adopted for a short time period where other options have been exhausted. Except in such exceptional circumstances, even in the current pandemic situation, arrangements must be made for a pharmacist to be at the pharmacy, including to undertake the responsible pharmacist role and to supervise the sale of POM and P medicines. We'll continue to regulate by taking into account the context of the individual pharmacy and any relevant information about resource, 
guidelines or protocols in place at the time, including those re relating to pandemics. So that's signed off by Duncan Rudkin of the GPHC. So that was quite a long read. So if I was to summarise back the way that's saying that actually, that's probably for me a bit of comfort around about RP regulations. Um, and I'm, I really welcome that very specific guidance. I know it's only RP is a load more than just the sale and supply. Um, so that probably gives you a bit of comfort about the, the, the acceptance of the flex that you might need to exercise to keep the people you look after safe. Um, so yeah, that, that's absolutely welcome. Okay, I'm being held up a notice to say it's now seven o'clock. Um, what I did say at the start is we would try and we would keep this short, we would keep it effective um, and keep it a good use of your time. Uh, I would hope to, to end this in the next 10 minutes. What to do, folks, I mean, we, we will have to cut off at some point. I'm sure we could go on all evening. I've got another five questions in the queue. So I'm going to take them. Um, Quick straw poll for the room. If if you've got other burning questions, if you're finding this very, very useful, please say so in the comments and we'll make a judgment call as the time rolls on to 10 past uh, as to what we do going forward. Um, it's safe to say we, our, main, our main aim here is to support you. Um, so if that's needed, we'll, we'll carry on. So please let us know. Sam Kremen, hello, Susan. So you have sent us a question saying ECS for access, so it's emergency care access access for pharmacists and technicians. Um, is that being nationally coordinated or with each board? Great question, um, Suzanne. So the current situation with that is that ECS access has been okayed due to the current circumstances, and that's okayed at a national level. Um, it's likely to sit with the health boards to actually manage that rollout. Um, but potentially they could work together to roll out in a timely manner. So we, we don't know what that's looked like yet or um, at this time, but it's safe to say it's well understood the importance uh, of getting ECS out there, particularly as um, GPs and other services start to self-isolate if they're very small practices. Um, if you don't, and if there's another pharmacy closed, we can absolutely see the situation where you're having to use unscheduled care guidance as you should. But if you can't see the, the fine detail of what the person is actually, that's really not helpful. So um, I believe that that will be uh, will be out shortly. But please do keep on the website for for further details and for communications from the board as well. Um, and this in these times, monitoring your NHS mail account um, may seem like a a, a distant priority. Um, it's probably worth being once a day at some point. Um, maybe people are throwing things at me at the screen, uh, but that's probably worth a check because that might give you the guidance to, to get switched on. So thank you, Suzanne, for that. Okay, so um, I've got a question coming from Pam, not a question, more a comment. She's had to work late, um, so she's missed it all. Totally appreciate that. We started at half six, we weren't going to catch everybody. Um, at the end of this, I get an option to save it and post it to our Facebook um, page which I will do, so it will be available, I believe, although again, that's what I said at the start, our tech team are, are, are not here, um, but I believe as long as I click the right button, it will be posted on our Facebook page, available to watch immediately. Um, we have Robbie at home just now, sort of furiously working on getting Harry's video that I recorded uh, with him five minutes before we started this, uh, out and onto our website page as well, which will answer a number of these questions. Uh, in, in a, a more structured, ordered way. So there's probably two ways to pick some information, though there, there are pieces of information in that that's not here, and, and vice versa as well. So probably worth watching both if you've got the time. Um, next question is from Philip. So Philip, you're asking, does the advice for pregnant women also apply to delivery drivers, some of whom are elderly and retired? Yes, Philip, it does. Um, it applies to high risk groups, um, and there are also higher risk groups that are uh, outlined as well, um, who will not only have to follow this uh, as strictly as they can this um, social distancing measures, which are outlined in the Health Protection in Scotland and the NHS Inform pages, which again our website links to it too. Um, the, the higher risk groups, which we believe to be around 200,000 people in Scotland, will, in addition to that, be contacted directly by the person in charge of their care at the health board to give them further uh, information about how they keep themselves safe and that will be the advice that it carries. So um, if the people are in a higher risk group and are contacted directly, the advice that they are getting will carry through and trump anything that's, that's out for the, the sort of high risk groups. Okay, thank you. 
Gillian Smith, thanks for thanks for the question. We have got a question that says, what are the guidelines for methadone? Should we still be supervising? So this is being looked at by Scottish Government at the moment. We know that new prescriptions are being assessed by clinics. Um, we would say that there, you, it's worth liaising with local key workers and substance misuse prescribers for, for a bit further guidance um, from them and from the health boards. Uh, this is again going to be one of those areas where it has absolutely got to be a person-centred decision. Um, where I don't believe at this stage yet, um, again, from speaking uh, from what we can see, the information that's available to us, it, it's not at this stage yet for putting out a, a blanket statement on stop all supervisions um, because clearly each person has a different profile of risk to themselves um, and to the wider community and for their health as well. Um, what we do know is that different boards are approaching this differently. Uh, Glasgow are absolutely working with the AT, which is the Alcohol and Drug Therapeutics team, and I know other, other boards across the, the country are looking at this as well, to try and get to a shared understanding so that they can provide you with advice, so please do look out for that. That comes back to my um, ask again, if you want to throw things at the screen for me asking of you, but it's probably worth checking out HS mail on its one day um, to, to have a, keep an eye out for that. Um, so yeah, we'll keep an eye on that situation as it goes forward. Um, I'll probably say this point, we are keeping our website up to date as much as we can with the national situation. Local decisions like that, which again will change with time as it goes on, we don't have the capacity for and we cannot keep curated on our website given it's not our information, which is exactly the reason that for all the clinical stuff we point you to a site that will always be updated rather than posting documents that we would then have to update as they, they keep updated. Um, we're not able to, to keep on top of that. So please, please do do look locally for guidance and look to your NHS mail inbox. Okay, so Azar uh, has got the next question in for us. So um, he's asking if the country goes into lockdown, will all pharmacies be kept open or will it be shared between nearby pharmacies? Uh, Azar, we are unable to say at this point, it's unclear what that would look like. Um, our priorities would absolutely, would absolutely be the care of patients, the care of pharmacy teams and the financial stability for the network, which um, our colleagues uh, Matt, Harry and Michael have been really working very hard on the financial stability. Now, uh, um, I think Harry said in his video yesterday, I had echo for us, for the team here, um, it's really, really heartening to see uh, finance is, is our job um, and it's absolutely critical that we make sure that the network is supported and you don't end up in a horrible situation in a couple of months or soon um, whether it's with drug bills, pain pharmacy teams and all the rest of it um, that's our job to look after that but what has been a uh, really clearness stood out um, in Scotland and we're really really proud of is I think we've had one question about about finance and it was from somebody in a trick situation about being able to pay their team the rest of it has been about looking after patients and looking after your teams um, and that's that part. And I think we'll look back on this, and that will really, really, um, that will really stand out in the profession is, is to be mentioned. Um, but that's the side. On the side, um, with the finance, Michael, Matt, Harry, and Scottish government are absolutely looking at how we set this up to make it simple um, to make sure that we account for the current situation as we currently understand it. Um, and make it as little a concern for you um, as possible. We did say earlier on, for those of you that didn't catch it, um, we need to start talking to the network about what might it look like if, if we went to that nuclear option of, or if, if the, the virus spreads and we end up with such a, um, such a thin workforce spread out. What does consolidation look like? It's easy enough if you're in one business, but what does that look like across businesses? We know that there are a myriad challenges that would face you there, um, but we really need to start thinking about what are the real, real key issues um, that we'd need sorted to allow that just to go ahead. Okay, the last question that's in front of me currently is from Debra. Um, Debra, you have asked, will CPS lobby for pharmacy teams to be included in childcare arrangements due to school closures? Yes, and the Cabinet Secretary for Health and Sport, Jean Freeman, got that message loud and clear today. Um, and as I said earlier as well, she is clear. She she wanted to pass on her her thanks to the network for everything that's been done, and she is 
clear that community pharmacy is the front line um, in the current situation um, and she understands what would happen if there, there was no um, no provision. It's an incredibly quickly moving situation. We don't know what it'll look like and neither the Scottish Government. Um, I'm sure they're working on it through the night. There'll be um, announcements made as we move closer to schools closing on Friday. But to answer your question directly, Deborah, yes, we are lobbying for it at the highest level of government um, on your behalf. So that takes us to the, end of the questions that are here at the moment. Um, I'm just going to barely look up at um, the rest of the team here, but we've gotten um, anything else filtering through before we close off for the evening? None. Yeah, I'll cover that then. Okay, right. So everyone, thank you very much. After I what I can't imagine what your day has looked like. Um, so thank you for coming on tonight. Thank you for spending the time. I hope it's been useful for you. Um, Harry's video will be on our website just shortly. This will be available to replay, I believe, um, immediately uh, on the Facebook page so that you can, you can go back and zoom to the bits that, you, that were of interest to you. Um, hard times ahead, uh, indeed, but we are doing everything we can to remove the nonsense, make them as little a concern for you as possible. Everything that's within our control, we're working on. Um, we're even doing uh, working with we, Amanda started work with mass with with mass media outlets um, th this evening to start getting messages out um, to patients about actually this situation is is really uh, dire and actually behaviours and expectations need to change. Um, we're doing what we can for you and you get everything you can the people of Scotland. So yet again, thank you, um, and we will continually keep you updated. Hopefully with a daily video from from Harry or or whoever else is available. Uh, in the office or remotely to keep you updated. If we, if there is a demand for another event, then then we'll be doing it. Um, this is probably the key message. So sign off, please. Rest as much as you can. That's available with you with your families, um, and we'll be in touch. Cheers now.